you have the chance to win a Spring Super Sweeps from Alleist. Donate $60 for one entry to win a brand new Lexus or $25,000 in cash. Check out all the other prizes too when you donate now at alleist.com slash sweeps. Today on the LA Report, USC has canceled its large graduation ceremony over security concerns during pro-Palestinian protests on campus. We'll have details. What will Caltrans do with a bunch of homes it bought to tear down for a freeway extension that never got built? And then L.A. students talk about what they want from candidates running for the L.A. Unified School Board. It's Thursday, April 25th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the L.A. Report from L.A. at 89.3. USC has canceled the large graduation ceremony for the class of 2024 that had been planned for May 10th. LAist reporter Yusra Farzan says the university is citing security concerns during pro-Palestinian demonstrations on campus. USC said the ceremony had to be canceled because it was too short notice to implement extra safety measures. The announcement came a day after 93 people were arrested after pro-Palestinian protesters set up an encampment in Alumni Park. Earlier this month, USC also announced it was cancelling the valedictory address after Asna Tabassam's selection as valedictorian was met by criticism from pro-Israeli groups. LAist reporter Yusra Farzan, USC will go ahead with individual school commencement ceremonies in which students are introduced by name and receive their diplomas on stage. The university will require tickets for those events. All this comes a day after police arrested 93 people who'd refused to leave a pro-Palestinian occupation camp and demonstration at USC's Alumni Park. A few miles west on the UCLA campus, protesters calling for an end to civilian deaths in Gaza have set up camp in front of Royce Hall. UCLA graduate student Vincent Dorr is one of the organizers. The frustrations have been simmering for a long time, um, and so that's what undergirds the solidarity that we see here, is, is the, the horrific violence being inflicted against Palestinians by, by the Israeli military. The students are calling on UCLA to divest from weapons companies that do business with Israel. We reached out to UCLA for comment and have not yet heard back. The California Attorney General has filed criminal charges against a top advisor to L.A. County District Attorney George Gascon. The story from L.A. is civics and democracy correspondent Frank Stoltz. Assistant DA Diana Turan previously served as a constitutional policing advisor at the Sheriff's Department. State Attorney General Rob Bonta alleges that in that capacity, Turan improperly downloaded confidential deputy files and impermissibly used that data when she joined the DA's office. Turan oversees the DA's files on police officers who have been accused of wrongdoing. Gascon would not comment specifically on the allegations, but said he would comply with the investigation. For LAist 89.3, I'm Frank Stoltz. When we come back, what will Caltrans do with a bunch of homes it bought to tear down for a freeway extension that never got built? Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge. This is the LA Report. I'm Nick Roman. Caltrans owns dozens of homes it had planned to demolish so it could run the 710 freeway from Alhambra up to the 210 in Pasadena. Well, that plan was abandoned long ago. LA's producer Jillian Moran Perez says tomorrow night Caltrans will hold a meeting on what to do with all those homes. Over 70 years ago, Caltrans acquired hundreds of homes in El Sereno, Pasadena, and South Pasadena as part of an effort to connect the 710 and 210 freeway. That plan was later canceled. Now, the agency is preparing to sell over 50 vacant single and multifamily homes. Caltrans wants the public's input on their proposed plan to ensure that the homes will be available to low- to moderate-income buyers and to meet the state's goal to create more affordable housing. 
LA's producer Jillian Moran Perez. The meeting on what to do with the Caltrans homes happens tomorrow night at South Pasadena High School from 5 until 8. Want to know how the health of you and your neighbors stacks up against other LA County neighborhoods? LA County Public Health has compiled the health stats from 179 communities and placed them in a searchable database that's updated regularly. Rashmi Shagiri is Public Health's Chief Science Officer. We have over 100 indicators. They're a combination of traditional health outcomes such as diabetes, cancer, asthma, health behaviors such as smoking, broader determinants of health such as healthcare access, and then social, economic, and environmental determinants of health such as poverty, housing, and environmental conditions. The data show stark health disparities in different neighborhoods. You can check out the numbers for where you live at the L.A. County Public Health website. Right now, the database is available only in English. It does not include Pasadena or Long Beach data, but it does link to the health departments in those cities. Candidates for three L.A. Unified School Board seats are making their case to voters, but what do students want from them? LA's education reporter Mariana Dale has been talking with students. Lakel White is a senior at Dorsey High School navigating the college application process. A lot of people in my class are like first in college students. So like we don't know and like we need extra help and we need extra support. For White, that support came from additional counselors hired through the district's Black Student Achievement Plan or BSAP. I'm not sure that I would have gotten into college without my BSAP counselors. The plan is one example of how LAUSD's board can redirect funding. More than 100 campuses have received money through the program. I'm Mariana Dale. On your next hike, keep an eye out for California newts. Even in urban Southern California, we still have newts in our streams and ponds. You'll find them in the Santa Monica Mountains and the Angeles National Forest, plus the Orange County backcountry. Newts produce a neurotoxin that protects them from predators. So if you do see a newt in the wild, remember they're for looking, not for picking up. Thanks for listening to the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow morning when Suzanne Watley brings you the L.A. Report AM edition. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujiea. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the LA Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. The LAist Spring Super Sweeps is happening now. You can win amazing prizes while supporting your source for local fact-based journalism. One lucky grand prize winner will get to choose a brand new Lexus or $25,000 in cash. Other prizes include an electric bike from Juice Bikes and $1,000 gas gift cards. Your donation of $60 gets you one entry to win. And the more you give, the more entries you get. Donate now at LAist.com sweeps.